In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use all of the sound design elements we've discussed. So how you can take cymbal swells and reverse cymbal sounds, manipulated hi-hat and snare sounds, and also reversed electronic ambient sounds, and use them musically within a pre-existing track. Now what I have here is Superior Drummer 3 loaded with all of the sound design elements that we have discussed in the previous three videos. I've also recorded a MIDI part that fits along with a track that I've created using all tune track products. So I'll let you hear part of the track without any of these new sound design elements and then I'll show you how we can add each of the things we've talked about in a musical fashion. Now this track that I'm going to play once again was created using all tune track products. The majority of the pad and string sounds are coming from the Dream Pop Easy X, and a lot of the loops are from the Dream Pop Easy X as well. And I actually opened up this expansion within Superior Drummer 3 so I could utilize different sound design elements of Superior Drummer 3 within the Dream Pop Easy X library. I'm also using a few sounds from Beat Station and a piano and road sound from Easy Keys. Let's take a listen to a bit of the track, and you'll notice that there's different sections, sections that break down, sections that build back up. We're going to use these sound design elements as a means to enhance those buildups and breakdowns. Now we won't go through the whole thing, but I just wanted to give an example of what the track sounded like before we start adding any of these build-up elements. Now I've already created the MIDI within Superior Drummer 3, and we have cymbal swells, we have the reverse cymbal, we have the manipulated hi-hat and rim-only articulation, and then we have our ambient 14 and modular snare for reverse sounds. If I go into the grid editor, we can take a look at what I'm doing throughout this track. And if I zoom in in different sections, you can see what we have going on. In this first section, we have a little bit of a cymbal swell that's happening. And that's actually the reverse cymbal with the delay at the end. I thought this would be a nice transition into the first section of the song where the groove actually starts happening. Now notice, in the grit editor, I had to add a MIDI note before the actual downbeat where the groove starts, which is measure 10 in this case. Because it's a swell and it's a buildup, what you need to do is try placing the MIDI in different places so that the end of the swell, or the end of the reverse cymbal in this case, happens when you want. So it happens right as the groove starts at measure 10, or maybe it stops right before or right after. This takes just a little bit of trial and error, but you want to manipulate the MIDI in a way that it starts early enough so you get a nice swell into whatever section of your song you're wanting to enhance. The next thing we have going on is our snare and hi-hat sounds. Let's go ahead and expand those out. We'll do the snare drum first, and this is actually the rim-only articulation. And what I'm wanting to happen here is I have that initial attack, that initial sound, which I'm placing on beat two. But then the echo is happening in time and happens on beat three, and then I have another snare type of sound happening on beat four. So let me show you what I mean. I'll go ahead and take a listen with the snare drum muted. And you can hear we have a snare drum right on beat four, kind of a hand clap sound. By adding this rim only on beat two, I have a sound on beat two that's not as big as the hand clap on beat four, but it just adds to the groove. I have an echo on beat three, and then the hand clap from what I produced previously happens on beat four. So you have the downbeat, which is a bass drum, and actually four on the floor throughout, and then you have sounds on two, three, and four to enhance the groove. Now 
there's another thing happening here as well with the hi-hat. If I scroll down and notice I'm expanding out the different sections so I can see what's happening for that instrument. We have an open hi-hat sound and then we have the closed sound. Now because of the envelope settings we've set, you're not really hearing that closed sound and that's okay because all I want you to hear is the open sound, but I want it to stop in time. I don't want it to just be an open sound. So what I want is that open hi-hat sound with a bit of an echo at a specific point in time. And see, there you get that nice echo and that's happening because of this closed hi-hat sound. hear that that fits very nicely with what's happening with the snare and the snare effects as well. So throughout the song, we have different cymbal builds, which is what these are right here. So we can take a listen to some of those. For example, coming out of this section. So a couple different cymbal sounds there that I'm offsetting. So remember when we worked with the right China stack and the left China, the swell is different. The left China, it's a longer buildup or longer fade in than the stack on the right. And this was intentional so that I have two different cymbal sounds and I offset them so you have a unique type of cymbal swell. And finally we have our ambient 14 sound and the modular snare sound. So I'm using that at different sections of the song to build into the next section. Here, I'm using the modular snare right before the cymbal swell. So I'm using all of these pieces together as we go from a busier section to a breakdown. Again, it's all about the timing. So you'll have to try some different things with the MIDI as far as the placement is concerned so that the swell happens and comes to an end right when you want it to and fits well with the music. Coming out of this breakdown section before the biggest section of the song, I'm using everything. I'm using cymbal swells and I'm using my ambient and modular snare sound as well. Again, I'm offsetting them because the build and fade in times of each of these elements is different and I want them to either end at the same time or maybe end at different times for a different effect. So there's a few different ideas on how you can utilize sound effects like cymbal swells, reverse cymbals, reverse snares, reverse hi-hats, adding delays, adding reverbs using the electronic sounds within Superior Drummer 3 for ambient type of effects, and manipulating the MIDI so that the timing is correct and it builds into the next section of the song in a musical fashion.